Hey there, welcome to Oman Runner. In today's video, I'm going to compare this, the Nike Alpha Fly 2, to this, the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus. First, I'm going to go through some tests over a variety of distances, then I'm going to review the data, and finally, I'm going to see which one I'd pick to run a marathon in. I'm making this video because I'm running the Berlin Marathon in September 2022 and I'm trying to pick a shoe to run in and in this week's test I'm going to put the A6 Metaspeed Sky Plus against the Nike Alpha Fly 2 and in next week's test I'm going to put this, the Ultra Vanish Carbon, against this, the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. Then I'm going to pick a winner from each one and put them head to head. I made individual videos on all of these shoes and I'll put some links at the end and more down in the descriptions below. This stage, I've no idea which shoe I'm going to run in. I previously ran a marathon in this, the Nike Alpha Fly, and I also ran two marathons in this, the Metaspeed Sky. They're the original version of the shoes. The new ones are substantially different. I took all of the data on the Garmin 955 and also the HRM Pro. And uh, although I put some uh, runs on Strava, I put all of them on the Garmin Connect app. And if you go in there, you can connect up and you can see all the data and you might come to different conclusions yourself or you might have different reasons to pick different parts of the data and you can happily comment down below. The Berlin Marathon is known as being fast and flat and ideal for setting a personal best. My previous personal best was set in Buckeye, Arizona this year in the A6 Metaspeed Sky and it was three hours, 53 minutes and eight seconds, roughly five minutes, 31 a kilometer or 8.53 a mile. And so I'm gonna target in Berlin five minutes 30. Hopefully I'll go faster, but who knows, I might go slower. And so that's my aim, to try and find a shoe that'll allow me to run an average of five minutes 30 or better over the 42.2 kilometers or 26.2 miles. I've been trying for some time to get better data, more data, and more reliable results. So in this, I'm going to do four different tests. I'm gonna do my usual one kilometer time trial gut busters a five kilometer threshold in each of the shoes, twice, um, a park run 5K race in each of the shoes, and an easy long run day. And I'll put the results at the end as we go through the video. Explaining each of the tests first, I the one kilometer time trial, I'm used to doing it, I do it in the park down the road, a standard course, so I can, I can get measurements and I can have some idea between the two. Um, there's some advantages, but it's a limited data set. I won't go through all the, the caveats, but there's a limited data set, as there is in any of these. I can't run a full marathon in all of these shoes just to figure out which is the fastest. It just, it just wouldn't work, wouldn't be consistent. So in the one kilometer time trial, what I'm trying to do is go at my fastest full gas on a full tank of energy and see what happens. About nine months ago, a viewer suggested that I should uh, do threshold runs as well as my gut busters. And I thought it was a great idea. It took me a lot of time and gadgetry to just get going. Turned out it was actually really valuable. So I did a 5K threshold in each of these shoes. So thanks Aristodiga92 for it was a really great suggestion. I wanted to race each of these shoes. So I, I did the park run 5K in, in all of these shoes. It's not very consistent because it depends on my form. Usually with the, the, the gut busters, I'm doing them a day or two days apart. So roughly the same weather, roughly the same conditioning. Um, with the park run, it could be weeks apart. I'm also trying to get better at running the park run. So it's not very consistent, but it is a useful set of data, particularly as there's a hill involved. And I, I really do like to get the data and I really enjoy doing the park run. So it's a great challenge. So I included those here too. I went for several long runs in the shoes. I mean, if you're, if you're gonna run a marathon, you don't wanna find halfway through that it pinches in your toe or it rubs your Achilles. So I went for long runs in all of these to sort of see where they okay, how would they feel on the long run. To talk through the methodology, um, typically I go out using the ABBA method as somebody coined it, uh, shoe A followed by shoe B, and then the following day or maybe a day at two part, shoe B followed by shoe A. I did that for the gut busters, the one kilometer time trials, and I also did it for the threshold running. With the park run, um, because they're every week, and sometimes um, something would come up on there every Saturday. Uh, so they were sort of inconsistent throughout and you get inconsistent results because of that. And also the long run, I just went out on a particular shoe when I had the time always on a Sunday. So how'd I get on? Well, gut busters first, the one kilometer time trials. The fastest times I've been around the track is three minutes and 48 seconds in the previous versions, the Alpha Fly and the Metaspeed Sky. The Alpha Fly 2 and the Sky Plus were almost identical in the speed I went out consistently a little bit slower at nearly four minutes, but very close to each other. The couple of weeks ago, I went out in the Alpha Fly versus the Alpha Fly 2, and I found them to be nearly identical. And in this case, the Tuesday results are here, 
and they're a second or two apart and then the Thursday a second or two apart. What you can find the, slow, the fastest time I went was 3 minutes 59 and the slowest 4 minutes and 3 seconds and the Sky Plus was faster by a second or two on each of those runs. What's more interesting in some ways, I'll dr drill down to some of the data here. You can see the cadence and uh, the stride length, all that sort of stuff. But I'm interested in vertical oscillation and the vertical, the vertical ratio. And again, I can capture those on the Garmin. And uh, on the Metaspeed Sky Plus, it was 5.5%. And the Alpha Fly 2 was slightly higher at 5.7%. So in this test, narrowly, Metaspeed Sky Plus wins it. I'm really glad that I did the threshold pace. Uh, my Garmin says at the start of the exercise that my threshold pace would be 5 minutes 27 per kilometre at 164 beats per minute. So I use that as a guide. That would be uh, faster if I could again run that pace in the Berlin Marathon. I'll be very happy. And then so I went out on Tuesday and I tried to run at that pace. It's really actually quite difficult to run at a, an exact seconds pace. And I found that Either way, in, even though I tried, in the Sky Plus, I ran at 5 minutes 18 per kilometre and 5.21 in the Alpha Fly 2s. So that was kind of interesting. On Thursday, I didn't do it exactly the same. On Thursday, I kind of felt, well, look, I tried to hit a target, so why don't I just run and run what I feel is a naturally comfortable threshold pace and see what that happens. And in the Sky Plus, that was 5 minutes 7 seconds per kilometre, and in the Alpha Fly 2, it was 5 and it's nine seconds per kilometre. So again, the Sky Plus was a little faster. I did park runs in all of these shoes. My fastest is in an Alpha Fly. I think it's 21 minutes and 4.49, something like that. And then uh, in both of these was considerably slower. <laughs> the Metaspeed Sky Plus was 22 minutes, 19 seconds. And the Alpha Fly 2 was 22 minutes, 39 seconds. But I wouldn't read too much into either of those, particularly with the Alpha Fly 2, because I was trying to test the Garmin Pace Pro, and uh, I spent so long checking the Pace Pro that I didn't concentrate on actually doing what I should have been doing, which was the running. So wouldn't read too much into the park runs. I had no issues in either of these two shoes on the long run, no chafing, no no uh, rubbing, nothing like that. They both ran fine. Um, the Sky Plus definitely flowed a lot better on my feet. I just flowed along, enjoyed it a lot more. The Alpha Fly I did enjoy, but it makes, it makes a lot of noise and I'm always conscious there's a lot going on down below. With the Sky Plus, I can just sort of run. Which shoe would I choose to run a marathon in? Well, it'll come as no surprise, be the Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus. It's faster marginally in the tests, but I think in the long run, uh, I will, I'll be more consistent in the pace. I think if the run was shorter, and certainly if I was more of a four foot striker, the Alpha Fly 2 would come more into it. There's so much going down into the, into the four foot that as a heel striker, I'm not getting as much benefit in from the longer distances. And I suppose some of my experiences in running in the original Sky and the original Alpha Fly would be feeding in here. But if I was going on a shorter run, certainly, and I enjoy running in the Alpha Fly 2 way better than the Alpha Fly, the original. As it happens, the, the Sky Plus is considerably cheaper than the Alpha Fly 2 by about 50 bucks, 50 euro. I suppose it doesn't matter now that I have them, but if you're considering them. Um, and it's also, and I think this is important, it's much lighter. It's 249 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces versus 308 grams and 10.85 ounces in the Alpha Fly 2. And I think that would pay off or negatively or positively in the long run. I'll put more uh, more details down in the description so you can see prices and costs and all that sort of stuff. And of course there are the more detailed videos. So yeah, in this test, Sky Plus shades it. So see you for the next one. I hope you enjoyed the comparison and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff down in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions that you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some related videos there. Thanks for watching. Till the next video, just keep running along.